They're, um, really a very good buy, Dr. Boyer. Is, uh, that the correct time? Oh, yes, quite. Oh, they're in perfect condition. And you think Mr. Sayer will be away all afternoon? Well, yes, I'm afraid so. He very much regretted not keeping his appointment with you. But, uh, about the clock. Will you, uh, take it? Oh, yes. Can you have it delivered at my place this afternoon? I'll see to it myself. I'm going uptown. I shall be home about 4.30, or a little after. Which clock do you prefer, Dr. Boyer? The Siena marble one. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mrs. Sayers. Oh, Mr. Pennywood. Yes, Mrs. Sayers. Is my husband out? No, Mrs. Sayers. He didn't wish to keep his appointment with Dr. Boyer, so he asked me to. I understand. How do you feel, dear? I'm very flattered to think that you're concerned about me. You should have kept your appointment with Dr. Boyer. Is that why you came downstairs, so you wouldn't miss seeing him? Don't say that, Albert. Stop playing with that knife. Why? It's very beautiful. In its own way, not yourself. Quite perfect. Decked with jewels, but sharp and two-edged. I won't listen to you. What about dinner? Franz and Martha have the afternoon off. We'll dine out. It's such a privilege to see the looks of admiration and envy which follow you into a dining room. Albert, please. I'm going to the hairdressers. Where shall I meet you? Telephone me later. Yes, Albert. But there might be some mistake. Well, you can't afford to jump at conclusions. There's no mistake. I was watching them. He let her know he'd be waiting for her at 4.30. Then there's nothing you can do but wait and see what happens. I'll see you later and bring the new will for your signature. Yes, we'll settle that definitely. Goodbye.
Try to control yourself. People will notice how nervous you are. I seem to see his face every place I turn. A drink will do you good. Oh, good evening. Uh, right this way, please. Young man, is Mr. Keith here? Uh, yes, miss. The uh, usual place. Your education in the bunches of higher chemistry has been somewhat neglected, Jerry. Sugar in itself is a carbohydrate. And when taken oh, with... Make it two with less sugar. Are you in conference? No, I'm right in. Your deposition in the Gordon case. And it has to be in the district attorney's office by nine in the morning. Oh, yes. That's too bad, Ella. That Gordon dame is a cute trick. Now she's sure to be hanged. I'll bet the guy she shot will turn over in his grave with grief. Oh, don't be that way. It's after office hours. Come on, let down your hair. It's not six o'clock yet. No. It is now. So come on, lock up and tell everybody to go home. Okay. Let's move the office over here anyway. It'll save me a lot of trips. And much more fun. There's no answer. And there's nothing to worry about. Are you through with the phone, ma'am? Yes, you can take it. Thank you. Aren't you going to finish your cocktail? No, I'd better be going. I'll drive around the park for a while and then go home. All right. Something just occurred to me. We'd better not be seen leaving here together. Perhaps you're right. I'll see you later. Quiet, quiet. Would you please stop that infernal noise? Did you hear what I said? Oh, all right. Jerry, will you put that away for me, please? Now, what was it you were trying to say? I was trying to remember what that number reminded me of when... <laughs> of course. Do you know? Sure, some blonde in the front row. Yeah, but what show? Well, how should I know? Well, you should. The Lady in Scarlet. The first night I took you out. I'll never forget it. I wished I could. And it wasn't the Lady in Scarlet. It was the Frolics of 32. It was the Lady in Scarlet. It was the Frolics of 32. It was the Lady in Scarlet. It was the season that Gentry Dame cut her husband's throat and then sliced the body up in the bathtub. I knew it would recall something romantic. Well, sure. It was with... The lady in Scarlet, you're quite right, Mr. Keith. Well, well, well. Julia Ralton. See, she knows all about it. The bathtub? No, that number from the show. She was in it. <laughs> and that was some show. Say, what was the name of that gargle you were endorsing? Uh, wait a minute, don't, 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 don't tell me. Uh, I've got it. Jerry, a back of the cocktail for Miss Ralton. It's Mrs. Sayre now, Oliver. I'm married to Albert Sayre, the art collector. Yeah, well, let's forget your troubles. But that's what I want to see you about. The office is closed for the night. Oh, I beg your pardon. Ella Carey, my Underwood artillery. How do you do? You're still a detective, Oliver? You handle investigations? For an old pal? Say, I'd get you a divorce if you were married to King Solomon. It's not a divorce. It's a matter of life and death. Whose life and whose death? My husband's. What's this all about? I don't know, Oliver, but I'm worried. My husband's in trouble, and I want you to find out what it is. Here, come along. Try that out on your tonsils. There's been a man watching our house lately, and Albert's been acting so strangely. He seems to be afraid of something. Any idea what it is? He won't tell me. He stays shut up in his office. I tried to reach him just now on the telephone, but there was no answer. Hmm. I'm almost afraid to go home. Why, Mr. Keith wouldn't think of letting you go home alone, would you, Oliver? <laughs> I wish you'd meet Albert. Perhaps if you talk to him. Well, I'll try. Two bits to a brass nickel, you find him all hacked up in the bathtub. Well, why don't you come along? I'll let you in on all the gory details. No, thanks. I think I'll stay here at the office. I have a little night work I want to catch up on. Snake. The 
the door's unlocked. Mr. Pennywood should be here. Pennywood? My husband's assistant. He usually remains on Thursday evenings until nine when the servants return. This door's locked. Haven't you a key? There's only one. It's usually in the door. Yes? There's no key in there now. Do you mind? Please do. Oh. Albert. Now, 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 now. Steady, old girl. Oh, Mr. Sears, what's happened? Albert's been murdered. Murdered? Now, will you take care of Mrs. Sayre, please? Yes. Operator, police department, 27th precinct. Yes. This is Oliver Keith. I want to speak to Inspector Trainee. No, oh, Inspector, you better come up to 8 East 51st Street. Peculiar happenings, including sudden death. What do you think of this arrangement, Keith? It's a setup. Maybe. It does look like two guys got together here to fight a duel and just cleared things out of the way so they'd have a lot of room, but it sounds phony. <laughs> Find out what that dagger through the hand means, trainee, and you'll save yourself a lot of trouble. What do you make of it? Your guess is as good as mine. Perhaps Sarah wanted to leave some clue. So he stuck a knife through his hand just to wish us luck. No, I can't go for that. All right, think of a better one. Nothing on this but Sayre's own fingerprints, Inspector. How about the foils? Nothing on either of them. Well, the fellow that did the killing ought to wipe them clean before he left. Uh, check that whole doorknob, will you, Bennett? you find a handkerchief tied around it. Well, what's that all about? Nothing. Won't get us anywhere. <laughs> I'm just curious. Well, I think I'm ready now to have a talk with Mrs. Sayre. Wake up and come along. She knows you. Might make her feel easier. Anything you can tell me before you leave, Doctor? Nothing much to report. The left lung was punctured just over the heart. He couldn't have lived over 15 minutes. What time would that make the death? Oh, not more than two hours ago. About five o'clock. I'll have a full report for you after the autopsy tomorrow morning. Good night. Well, let's go. Don't disturb yourself, Mrs. Sayre. I'm sorry, but I'll have to ask a few questions. Inspector, if you've no objections, I'd like to be excused. There's uh, well, no assistance I can give you. I'll find out about that. Do you live here? Why, no. 
But I can always be reached at the Empire Club. Is that your address for the police blotter? What do you mean? Well, if the gendarmes make a social call and find that isn't your home address, they might feel rather hurt. Well, uh, I have an apartment also on 74th Street, uh, the Alcazar. What time did you leave here this afternoon? About uh, 4 o'clock or near that, wasn't it, Mrs. Sarah? Why, I don't know exactly. Well, it was just after Dr. Boyer left while you were still in the study with Mr. Sayre. When did you leave, Mrs. Sayre? Very soon after that, I went to the hairdressers. Where did you go when you left here? Well, uh, I had an errand uptown. I'd promised to deliver a clock to Dr. Boyer, which he just purchased. I arrived at his house on 95th Street at, a, well, almost exactly 5.30. What makes you so sure of the time? Well, Dr. Boyer wasn't at home. His servant admitted me. I set the clock up on the mantel, adjusted it to the correct time, 35 minutes after 5, and left. Can I see you a minute, Inspector? I got some good prints on the doorknob, Mr. Keith. I've checked them with the ones I found around the room. There's one set don't match. Well, what about it? Were you just guessing, or are you holding out something? I'm still curious. All right. Chase down to the department and see if you can match those odd prints with anything on the files. Okay. What about this Pennyward guy? Well, what about him? That exact time gag in his story sounds planted. That's the doorbell. Oh, I'm Dr. Boyer, Mr. Sayers' physician. Uh, doctor, come with me, will you? I don't quite understand this. We'll explain later. What time did you get to your house tonight, Doctor? Why, I... I spent most of the afternoon at the medical center. I stayed rather later than usual and arrived home about a, a quarter of six. Did you come here now to see Mr. Sayre professionally? Not exactly. I bought a clock here this afternoon. But this isn't the one I selected, Mr. Pennywood. No. It was a Siena marble one I wanted. Oh, I'm sorry. Too bad you had your trip uptown for nothing. And you'll have a hard time beating that. Now, if you will kindly explain what this is all about. You can't keep me up. Just a minute, miss. My father's been murdered. I know it was murder, and I know who did it. It's all right, Burke. If you're in charge here and you want to know the truth, I can tell Alice, you. Alice, quiet. Go ahead, I'm listening. She did it. Ever since she married my father, she's been plotting to get all of his money because she's in love with Dr. Boyer. Alice, how can you say that? You can't fool me. I've watched you. You waited till you got him to disinherit me. And you killed him so you could get all of his money. Why did your father disinherit you, Miss Sarah? Alice, you're saying things you don't mean. You're hysterical. When did you see your father last? After lunch. I had decided to move away. I went to take an apartment, and I just came back to get my things. Why did you do that? Because she made my father hate me. You know that isn't true, Alice. I've always tried to be friends with you. Alice, you've said enough. What do you know about this? Miss Sayers' accusation is ridiculous. I have met Mrs. Sayer once or twice when I visited her husband professionally. But our acquaintance has been most casual. And now, if you'll excuse Not me, Not so I'll... fast, Dr. Boyer. Telephone for you, Inspector. I'll talk to you later.
Are you sure? We'll send out a couple of men to bring him in and hold him till I get there. Well, they found the duplicates of the fingerprints on the doorknob. So what? The name is Diker. He did a short stretch about four years ago. Diker? Oh, yes. Runs an art gallery on 7th Avenue. We'll see what they know about him in there. Wait a minute. Leave Diker on ice for a while. Have you something better to offer, Hawkshaw? Maybe. I'm going to deal one from the bottom of the deck. That apartment you rented this afternoon, was it on 74th Street? Why... The Alcazar? You have no right to that. You and Mrs. Pennywell were married yesterday at Greenwich. Yes. And when you told your father today, he disinherited you. Yes. He turned Alice off. So I'd have to support her. He accused me of being a fortune hunter. And then he gave me my notice to leave at the end of this week. But that didn't matter to us. It's apt to matter a lot to the district attorney. Mr. Keith, Inspector, come here. Look, across the street, under that lamp. That's the strange man who's been watching the house. Don't let anyone leave till I get back. What's the matter? Did her husband come home? Don't kid. This is one of those things. In the bathtub? No, all over the carpet. Ooh, it's getting to be a habit with those blondes. That's why I came after you. Did you get him? <laughs> Couldn't make it. That guy must be halfway to Albany by now. Mm, you know the nuisance. Yeah, but I got enough headaches. He's always so sweet. There's no use holding any of that bunch in there. Any one of them could have rubbed the guy out. And they're all lying. Maybe you're right. But don't forget that little souvenir stuck through the right hand. I wish I could forget it. Do you want to come downtown and meet your friend Diker? No, not tonight. He can't work overtime. It interferes with his drinking. Mm, better look me up in the morning. I have to take this back to the aquarium. Yes, do that. Drop around for breakfast and tell us all about it. It saves reading the newspapers. <laughs> Toots. Say, what time does this guy get to his office? I've been trying to get in here for 15 minutes. Did you try opening the door? I never thought of that. What's the matter? Don't he go to bed nights? Sure, but he's hard to please. Uh-uh-uh. Mustn't touch. Gotta have his coffee first. Be awake and very gently. It's me, sweetie pie. Coffee. Mm. Isn't she cute? Yeah. Someday I'm going to have a lot of fun investigating her murder. I have a theory uh -huh. on this. The giant intellect doesn't function until after the first cup. As I was saying. Not I yet. And what's the latest on the dagger in the hand mystery? I said, I have a theory on that. Following up what you said about uh, Sarah leaving a clue, there's only one thing that knife in the right hand could mean. His right hand man done it. And who's his right hand man? 
penny word. Allow me to be the first to congratulate you. That explains everything, including Dyker's fingerprints on the doorknob. Yeah, that's, uh, that's what I said. Uh, this guy, Dyker, you seem to know him. Dyker? Well, what about him? Well, it looks like he took a walkout powder. We covered his house all night and he didn't show. He will. If he's the guy we want, he's much too smart to let you get that much on him. Yes, and Boyer gave us the runaround, too. What are you going to do, take a bath? Oh, no. I give him that in private. Pay no attention to the maiden. Go ahead. Boyer's alibi about staying at the medical center until 5.30 was phony. We checked up and found out he left there about 3.30. Hmm, that makes it simple. Dyker, Pennyworth, Boyer. And don't forget the blonde missus. She was on the loose, too. We're all away from the house at the time the murder was committed. You're a big help. Come in. Mr. Key? Yes, sit down. You'll excuse me, won't you? You advertised in this morning's paper concerning the purchase of a 19th century snuff box to complete a collection. Right. I have several that might interest you. Name, please. F.W. Dyker. Get the inspector another cup of coffee, Ella. If I remember correctly, you were associated in business with Mr. Albert Sayer? I knew him slightly in our profession, that's all. And you visited him yesterday? Where were you last night? I understand now. This advertisement was a police trap. Come on, answer me. Why, surely, the Manhattan Bears. I spent the night there. I was in need of a rest and massage. Last night, I engaged in a fencing tournament at my athletic club, and... Fencing? Certainly. For years, Mr. Dyker has been considered one of the finest swordsmen in Europe. Get the point? You're under arrest for the murder of Albert Sayer. So you've come to that conclusion. Very well. Shall we leave? Uh, sorry we couldn't have a longer, more pleasant chat. I feel we would have understood one another. No offense. We'll meet again, I'm sure. Good work, Keith. That's what I owe you. Yeah, try and collect anything from a cop. And the next time you come, bring your own coffee. Get that Pennyward guy on the phone, will you? Tell him I'm going to pay him a little visit. But a monkey that gorilla Dyker's going to make out of you. And I thought you were smart. Quiet, I'm thinking. Mr. Keith, calling on Mr. Pennyworth. Yes, sir. He's expecting you. Good morning, Mr. Keith. I've been very busy straightening up Mrs. Sayre's business affairs. A gruesome job, but... But with interesting prospects. I beg your pardon? Let's get down to cases, Penny. What about Dyker? Mr. Dyker? Don't evade the question. We found his fingerprints on the doorknob yesterday. What was the connection with Sayre? Well... Really, Mr. Keith, there are certain things that... Are you going to tell me, or do you want them to sweat it out of you at headquarters? Well, I don't wish to slander a dead man, but... Mr. Sayre did quite a profitable trade in faking antiques. Dyker disposed of them through his auction house. They, they had a difference over money, which Dyker claimed Sayre owed him. Had Dyker been trying to collect? As a matter of fact, he had. <laughs> That's funny, Sayre should turn crooked. Seemed to have all the money he needed. I suppose no man has all the money he needs. No, except a dead man. And he never has enough for his relatives. You're alluding, of course, to what Alice, uh, Mrs. Pennyward, said last night? What do you think? In all fairness to Mrs. Sayre, there's no justice in the accusation. It was the outcome of hysteria. No, it wasn't. And I'm going to prove it. Alice, will you please? I've talked to Mr. Shelby, father's lawyer, and he's coming here to read the will. Then you know what I've told you is the truth. You'll see why that woman murdered my father. 
If the police don't take action, I'm going to the district attorney and tell him everything I know. Alice, let's drop this. I have a hunch the DA is going to want to know about this anyway. Mr. Keith, Mrs. Sarah would like to see you. Excuse me, will you? Come in. Well? Sit down, Oliver. You and I used to be pretty good friends. I hope we still are. What's the grief? Want to cry on my shoulder? I have a bag of troubles I'd like to hang there. All right, shoot. Well, I wasn't at the hairdressers yesterday afternoon, and Dr. Boyer wasn't at the medical center till 5.30. <laughs> you don't have to be a crystal gazer to do that out. Where were you? Driving in the park. Had a nice day for it. You're all wrong. There was nothing between Dr. Boyer and me. I was in love with Albert. What's the lowdown? Dr. Boyer's a friend, only that. Albert was a very difficult person, you know. Doctor was his friend also. He understood our circumstances and sympathized with both of us. I often went to him for advice. That's okay with me, Julia. But if our friend the inspector gets a load of it, they'll be mad a foot deep. Well, what do I do? Well, you could buy me a drink. Come in. Mr. Shelby is here, ma'am. Thank you, Martha. In case you don't know it, your stepdaughter has demanded a reading of your papa's last testament. Then she's going to sell you down the river. So come along, take it on the chin. I'm uh, somewhat surprised, Alice, at your insistence in going into the matter of your father's estate so soon. I have good enough reason. I suppose. Of course, there's no reason why the matter should be kept secret. Mrs. Sayre, please accept my deeper sympathy. This is Mr. Keith, Mr. Shelby. How do you do? If you've no objections, I'd like to have him present. None whatever. And I'll be as brief as possible. In a few words, the entire estate is equally divided. All monies and properties are shared between Mrs. Sayre and you, Alice. But, but that can't be right. I heard Father call your office and give instructions to cut me off without anything. You're quite right. But fate seemed to decree otherwise. I was at my broker's office when your father called. Therefore, the new will was not drawn up in time for his signature. Is your face red? Then, then my wife is joint heir to everything. Yes, but I must warn you, Alice. Don't expect much. Your father had been trading heavily on the stock market recently with severe losses. But there were a hundred thousand dollars in government bonds which father had set aside as my wedding gift. They're not uh, mentioned here. Perhaps they're among Mr. Sayre's personal effects. Well, then they must be in the, in the safe. There's only one person who knows the combination of the safe. That is I, Mr. Shelby. I haven't yet opened it, but I shall be glad to do so in your presence. bond should be in that metal box. Ah, 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 ah. Careful. You might burn your fingers. Oh. They're gone. You've stolen them. Never mind, Alice. If she has, there's a way of getting them back. I'm sorry I had to be a witness to this. If you need me, I'll be glad to be of service. Thank you, Mr. Shelby. Mr. Keith. 
Now what? Why don't you give the poor little girl back her dough? Oh, Oliver. It looks like I'm going to need you more than ever now. Mm -hmm. I love to have women crave me. Now run along. I want to be alone here. I'm going into a trance. Oh, I must lock the safe. Don't you trust me? Of course. I'll attend to that. You're pretty tough, ain't you? But wait till I get through with you. You're through right now. As you, I'd think that over. How about that appointment you had yesterday afternoon? You know where. Yeah, I thought you'd see it my way. I'll be there. The Carlton Bar in about an hour. Gentlemen, see you, sir. More company. Going to throw me out? No, sit down. Thanks. Got a cigarette? Surely. Who was your visitor? I never saw him before. He thought he had something on me and was trying to shake me down. But I don't play that way. No? I wonder why Sarah was playing with a crook like you. Birds of a feather. <laughs> One thing I like about you, you're honest. Why was Sarah holding out on your cut? I'm afraid we'll never know. It's hard to get answers from a dead man. How'd you find your way out of jail? Why does one have a lawyer? <laughs> That's right. But it must have taken quite a lot of bail. It did. One hundred thousand dollars. Cash? Yes. Government bonds. Hmm. Or it could be sweeter. Where'd you get the dough? I'm surprised such a clever detective would ask. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> You're a great help. I know almost as much now as I did when I came in. I'm glad to be of service. Oh, that's all right. Say, who was Sarah's broker, do you know? Mitchell Brooks and Company. Oh. Uh, can I move your phone call? Their number is Wall, 4371. You mind dialing it for me? What's the good word? Going to take another fling at the market? No, Charlie. I'm shooting craps now. You meet a nicer class of people. <laughs> Say, I want you to do me a favor. A hundred thousand in bonds. Lost, strayed, or stolen. Yes, I know the account. I'll try and get you that information. Let you know later. Thanks. Well, I'll be seeing you in jail, Dyker. Who can tell? Eventually, why not now? Come on, why waste time drawing pictures of it? You know, I got a big idea. Yeah? Let's relax first. Let's make Jerry a partner in the business. Then we wouldn't have to pay office rent. 
Haven't paid any for over six months. Can't beat that. Yeah, I know, but the only thing you can put the landlord on the cuff for is rent. But here, charge it, Jerry. Okay. Success to crime. And more business for investigators. Where are you going? I'll tell you when I get back. If it's another blonde, I'll knock the wave out of her hair. Thank you, sir. Figure it out for yourself. What's it worth to you? I should smash your face in. But you won't, because that might put your lady friend on a hot seat. You've got just enough on her to force my hand. That's right, and I've got a pretty good idea what it's worth to keep the police from finding it out. Come to my office. We can't talk. It suits me, Doc. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah? Who was she? Now listen, stupid. Do you think you're the only detective in the family? Who are you calling? I wasn't. I suppose you went into the telephone booth to fix your girdle. Who were you calling? Santa Claus. I want him to bring me a nice new razor to cut that lovely little throat. Behave. Sit down. And take a letter. Who to? I can't tell you. It's confidential. Ready? Yes. Inspector Lewis Trainee, Police Headquarters, 27th Precinct. Please come to the Carlton Bar immediately. We are going to have Dr. Boyer look at your adenoids. I don't know how to spell adenoids. It's all right. Trainer doesn't know either. Want this to go by special messenger? Hmm? Oh, I forgot to tell you. Telephone it. Could you manage to tear yourself loose from a nickel? I just love generous men. A few more days on this Sarah case and I'll need to see a doctor. A brain specialist? No, they've got to have something big to work on. Okay, then we'll send him to a foot doctor. You wait here. Dr. Boyer in. He left the office for the afternoon. Where did he go? The doctor didn't say. Well, we'll have a look around. Oh, you can't go in there. Come on. Rye. Bourbon. Thanks. Make mine with ginger ale. Well, we're just in time to be too late. Maybe you're just in time for the funeral. The fellow that got away from us last night. You think he's dying? That's the last thing he'll do. Just duped. The whiskey glasses. That puts the doctor in a spot. And maybe Sarah's wife. And gentlemen prefer blonde. Shh. I wonder what this mug had on Boyer that he wanted to rub him out. He didn't want to rub him out. Maybe he just wanted to see what he looked like when he was asleep. Quiet, please. Boyer was just trying to get the truth out of him. Ever hear of scopolamine? What? Scopolamine. Oh. It's a hypnotic. Destroys all willpower and the ability to lie. Give me that bottle. I can use it. And it's a cinch the doctor found out what he was after. Hey, look. Rip Van Winkle's coming out of it. What's this all about? I don't know nothing. Maybe he ain't awake yet. Let me try it. You can't get nothing out of me. Get the man on the door. Okay, Commissioner. 
Well, what are you doing here? I'm a patient. Oh, yeah? What were you trying to sell Boya? I wasn't, I tell you. I came up here and he gave me a drink. That's all I remember. We'll handle him later. I'll get a hold of Boyer and sweat it out of him. Take this fellow to headquarters. Then we'll send out a general broadcast for Boyer. You want a lift up to your place? Sure, he always takes everything that's free. Come along, Toots. I want to find out who that blonde was you were calling up. But we will remit. At... Hello? Oh, hello, Charlie. Sure. $70,000 worth. It looked fishy, huh? What was the issue of the bonds? Liberty 38s. Huh. That's very funny. Yeah. Only $70,000, huh? Thank you. What's so funny about the 38s? It's something that even I cannot quite understand, so it would be useless telling you. Thanks. Oh, I bet that's a that guy to collect on the furniture again. I just dropped in to see you on a very important matter. Ah, had a little session with Mr. Shelby, huh? Oh, yes, yes, just some papers for Alice, Mrs. Pennyward. Uh, well, I, uh, I hope I'm not intruding. Oh, no, stick around, we'll cut a piece of cake. Pay no attention. What's on your mind? Well, the fact is, Mr. Keith, I haven't come to carry stories. But Alice, Mrs. Pennyward, believes that you should know of this. Well, I will, if you tell me. The truth is, as a friend of Mrs. Sayre, I have to protect her. But she's been meeting Dr. Boyer secretly for some time. My, my. And this afternoon, while she was out of the house, he called asking for her. He seemed terribly upset, as though under a great strain. What's the rest of it? Well, he wrote a note and left it for her. What was in it? Well, I... Uh, oh, yes, you opened it, huh? Uh, well, Alice, Mrs. Pennyward insisted. It read, meet me at six o'clock at the usual place, vitally important. Where is the letter? It was Mrs. Sayers, so I resealed and left it for her. Oh, that was nice of you. Have you any idea where this usual place is? Yes. Alice, uh, Mrs. Pennyward, distrusted Mrs. Sayre and has followed her on several occasions to where she met Dr. Boyer, just inside the park at the marble fountain entrance. Mm. And I thought that... Mm -hmm. Hello. Hawkshaw? Well, get a load of this. The case is in the bag. I got it out of Boyer's patient. Uh, he's another monkey like yourself. Sarah hired him to tail the wife. She and Boyer were together the afternoon of the murder. Now, all I want is Dr. Boyer. And I'm going to make you a present of him. He's meeting Mrs. Sarah at 6 o'clock. So come along up with the squad wagon and we'll be a reception committee. Right? Of course, you know that Boyer and Mrs. Sayre murdered her husband. Well, under the circumstances... I... Alice, that is, Mrs. Pennyworth, thinks they did. Yes, and I must say I'm forced to agree. Want to take a ride, nuisance? What can I lose? You'd better come along, too. Dr. Boyer. The body's still warm. It's too cold to sweat. Look. Couldn't be dead very long. It's a cinch. She got here first. She was afraid he'd lost his nerve. And when he shows up, she lets him have it. Couldn't have been more than five minutes ago. Remember the knife through the hand? Sure, but what's that got to do with it? This is first cousin to it. 
It's very unusual for a man to keep a cigarette in his hand after he's been shot. <laughs> cigarette was put there so that anybody passing by would think he was still alive. Now, it's a safe bet he was shot somewhere else then brought here in his own car. Well, what of it? Maybe she met him someplace else and then brought him here. Mm, it all depends upon whether she'd been home to get his note. I can let you know that. I have to be getting home anyhow. Alice, uh, Mrs. Pennyward and I are sitting on the Majestic tonight. Whoops, what a rough honeymoon. We, uh, we have a business conference before we leave with Mr. Shelby. There's, uh, nothing more I can do here now, so, uh, if you'll excuse me, I'll, uh, I'll call a taxi. Don't let us keep you. I'll be around and get the dope on that letter. That fellow makes me itchy. Maybe it's love. How about attending the little business conference tonight? What for? Sarah didn't leave the police department nothing in his will. Other hand, she did. The name of the one who murdered him. And I suppose you'll go into a trance and find out who did it. <laughs> Let's go down to headquarters and pick up that clock we found in Boyer's office. He's got lots more to say, and if we get him in a tight spot, maybe he'll spill it. I'd like to have Dyker present, too. What's your idea? Oh, just a whim. Come along, stupid. Huh? Tom, you wait here in the corner, Tom. I can't quite understand your object in requesting this gathering tonight. It can lead to nothing of importance. Who knows? Well, my business here concerns only Mr. and Mrs. Pennywood. They're assigning their interest in the estate to my charge during their absence. Maybe they won't be going anyplace. This ain't going to get you nowhere. You got nothing on me. Come on, come on. I'm very sorry to intrude, Mrs. Sarah, without your invitation. It's quite all right. Maybe you're doing yourself a favor. Take a seat. Thanks. Well, what now? I'll get right to the point, Inspector, if you'll all make yourself comfortable and relax. I'm extremely happy that you were all able to accept my informal invitation. You're very welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, we are about to solve the mystery of the murder of Albert Sayre by a simple problem in time equations. Stupid. Problem. Uh. Come, 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 kiddies. Two tardy pupils. Now the class is full. What's the meaning of this? Look here, we haven't time to. You don't know how much time you're liable to have. We might miss our boat. Mr. Shelby, is this necessary? Mr. Keith, you're taking rather a high hand. These people have legal rights. That's what I said. But if they stop to exercise them, it's a cinch they'll miss the boat. Do you condone this procedure, Inspector? What? Yeah, I... What you said. I want the facts and I don't care how I get them. Thanks. Won't you sit down? To state the case with elemental simplicity, we will start with number eight, East 51st Street. Mr. Sayre was known to be alive and well in his office up until some time before five o'clock on Thursday, August the 22nd. This fact is attested to by Mr. Pennywort, who left the house at about 4.15. That is correct? Yes. Mr. and Mrs. Sarah were in the we'll study. We'll get to that later. Mr. Pennywort proceeded to Dr. Boyer's and arrived there at... Make this correction, please. At about 5.30 o'clock. And I can prove it. You have, very satisfactorily, which eliminates you for the present. Oh, wait a minute. What about the dagger through the right hand? The right hand man? Mm hmm A keen deduction, Inspector. We'll remember that point. Mrs. Sayre, you left the house shortly after Mr. Pennywood, about 4.20. You proceeded to the park where you met Dr. Boyer at about 4.35. Yes. You drove around the park with Dr. Boyer for almost an hour and then arrived at the Carlton Bar about 5.30. Which gave them plenty of time. Please don't interrupt. Mr. Dyker, 
And you? You left your auction rooms at 4 o'clock and arrived here about 4.32, shortly after Mr. Sayre had left. I presume so. Finding the front door unlocked, you entered the house. That's right. I knew Sarah was at home. I saw him from the street as I stepped from my cab. He had been trying to avoid me. Hmm. And after you entered? I went to the salesman's door. It was locked. I called to Sarah, but he ignored me. There was nothing I could do, so I left. We'll have to take your word for it, for the present. The best swordsman in Europe. Thank you. Mr. Quigley, you were hired by Mr. Sayre to watch his wife and report her actions. Yeah. You saw her leave the house. You followed her to the park where you saw her meet Dr. Boyer. Yeah, I tried to trail him through the park, but they beat me to a signal at 72nd Street. And I lost him. Then? I fooled around and came back here. What time? Well, I was here to arrive with you about 6 o'clock. Mm -hmm. You used to work for Sayre as a collector before you became involved in this divorce racket, didn't you? Yeah, I worked for him. Mm. And he caught you chiseling and threatened to turn you over to the police. That's a lie. Now, 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 don't talk back to teacher. Or I'll have to wrap this around your neck. Well, what about it? Well, yes. But it ain't got nothing to do with this. Oh, yes, it has. You made a deal with Sarah that if you got the goods on his wife, he'd turn over to you some forged notes of yours that he held. So you tried to frame Mrs. Sarah. When you couldn't get anything on her, you thought of another way of getting a hold of those phony notes. You can't pin anything like that on me. Can't I? You came back here, found Sarah alone, Saw the safe office open, so you collected two ways. I didn't, I tell you. I didn't kill him. All right, maybe you didn't. And there was $100,000 worth of your wife's bonds in that safe, too. Yeah, yes, there were. And you never got a chance to lay your hands on him? No. No, he must have stolen them, but he won't get away with it. So what? Well, uh... Well, if it's possible to recover them, we'll have to leave it to Mr. Shelby. <laughs> That's giving them up awful easy, isn't it? Well, I really haven't time to discuss it. I demand that Alice, Mrs. Penny Ward, and I be allowed to leave. One moment, please. What's in that briefcase? Some private papers of mine. You mind if I take a look at them? Well, I certainly do. I won't allow you to. Why? Is there something in there you're afraid I'll see? <laughs> no, but... Well... I... You know what... Bonds you never laid your hands on. These are three of the bonds stolen from Mr. Sayre's safe. I can vouch for that. Well, somebody must have put the bonds there. I never saw them before. I knew it. That alibi was too good. The right-hand man. Mr. Shelby, you know the type and denomination of these bonds, do you not? Why, yes. What are they? $10,000 Liberty 38s. Is that correct, Mrs. Sir? Yes. Here are three of them. You thought your wife had been disinherited. You knew these were in the safe, so you murdered her father in order to get hold of them. That's absurd. You're trying to frame me. Mr. Shelby, this is damning evidence. You're sure of the nature of these bonds? Yes, certain. And yet, at the reading of the will, you disclaimed any personal knowledge of them. What is this? I'm afraid this is going to be rather embarrassing for you, Mr. Shelby. You killed Sam. Ah, oh, don't be ridiculous. Oh, yes. You killed him when you brought in the new will to sign that afternoon. He had to open the safe to get the old will out. You knew the bonds were there, $100,000 worth of them. You needed $60,000 to cover your losses on the stock market, so you killed him and took the bonds. $70,000 you negotiated through a fence, and the remaining three you planted on this boy, hoping to place the suspicion there. He's yours, Inspector. Look out! Huh? You're too smart for your own good. Don't move! What was that you threw? That dope that makes them tell the truth. And I was saving it to use on you. The last piece of evidence, Inspector. You'll find the bullet that killed Boyer will match that one. So you tried to blackmail Boyer, did you? But he was too smart for you. 
He figured you knew who came into the house about the time of the murder. And when he'd opened and found out it was Shelby, he went to see him. Shelby killed him to keep his mouth shut. You knew Shelby came here and you kept your mouth shut? Sure, I ain't no sap. You saw what Boyer got. Oh, by the way, Mrs. Sayre asked me to give you these forged notes. We found them in the safe. Is that all you want with me? Mm -hmm. Nothing else I can think of. Just a minute. You're going to take a trip downtown. Mr. Keith, I want to thank you. Now I presume we may go? With my blessing. And remember to do what's right by our little Nell. Quiet. Sorry I made you miss the boat. Oh, that's all right. We'll postpone our trip. We'll take the next boat. And sometime when you feel you can, I, I hope you'll forgive me. I do now, Alice. And I wish you lots of happiness. Thank you. If you'll allow me, I'll say good night. If I can ever be of service, let me know. Thanks for your cooperation. I'll be seeing you. Yeah, we got two sets of fingerprints now. You know, there's still something that's got me worried. And what is that? That dagger through the hand. Forget it. That was just a gag to put us on the wrong track. Then why did you keep telling me to look out for it? Gave you something to think about, didn't it? Wise guy, ain't you? <laughs> Well, Julia? I don't know how I can ever repay you, Oliver. Oh, that's easy. Our rates are always reasonable. And you can't tell when you might marry again and need us. <laughs> it's all right. Forget it. When you do a favor for an old pal, you hate to put a price on it. Come around and see us sometime. Come on, ignorance. Goodbye. Forget it. You're a smart guy. How are we going to eat? Forget that, too? By the way, mastermind, what did that funny-looking blackboard mean? Not a thing. Well, then, what was the idea? <laughs> we used one in the last case I was on, and everybody thought it was lots of fun. Come on, call a taxi. Taxi nothing. We're walking. I can't. My feet hurt. I ought to slap you. But I'm too tired, so I'll just have to kiss you. Oh, Oliver, you hardly leave me strength enough to walk. <laughs> Come along, stupid. <laughs> 